Hello, my fellow sleuths. Sorry for the delay in episode four of you. I've been under the weather, but I wanted to get this out before the new episode airs. I'll be taking some days off, or I am taking some days off, so the episode five review should be out pretty quickly. But with that said, spoilers for all the previous episodes and the trailer. Let's get decoding Death and Other Details, Chapter 4, Hidden. This episode has surprised me more than any of the others. Lelia, knowing who Victor Sams is, strange things from Agent Erickson, the Ukrainians hidden underneath the boat. It's a lot going on, and I'm about to make some bold claims. I think everyone is playing Rufus Coatsworth. Hopefully, some of the reasons I think so, I can explain, and I'm sure some of them I cannot. But but the biggest part of this theory is that the only person or one person who is important to the story that has never seen Imogene's mother, Kira Scott, is Rufus Coatsworth. He's never seen her before. I only say that because there's this big theory. I figured out a section of it, but then I went to go look up pictures of the actress and saw that someone else on the internet had figured this out weeks ago. There is a possibility that Interpol agent Erickson, played by Linda Emond, is in fact Imogene's mother. There are quite a few things that make it seem like it's possible. First, here is a side-by-side -side of the two characters. They look very similar, especially with the hair, just different colors. But even stranger, I said to myself, let's just check out IMDb for the cast and characters. But there is not IMD credit for any actor for the character of Kira Scott, Imogene's mother. But Linda Eman is credited as Agent Erickson for all 10 episodes of the show. Going back to the haircut, I know a lot of people, even I myself, was not a fan of Imogene's haircut. I thought it looked a little strange on her, uh, that it didn't fit her very well. And it is very similar to Agent Erickson's haircut. And while being locked up on the boat, the lawyer, Llewellyn, told the agent that the haircut does not fit her. So it kind of seems like this sentiment making giving these people this awkward haircut is brought full circle in a way between us and the characters on the show noticing that this is an odd haircut it is what first made me look back and notice something was up was when agent erickson was talking to the governor on the boat she showed her a bracelet that's supposed to help seasickness these types of things are often considered junk science. They have not been proven to work, even though there are many people that believe they do. I don't know, but Agent Erickson does not seem like the type to believe in such a thing or be into such a thing. She seems a little bit more logical and only following things that you have clear proof of. While rewatching episode one, I noticed that it was stated that Imogene's mother would have loved this mystery of figuring out who killed Heath Trebinsky, that she loved solving puzzles much like a detective. And then Imogene herself stated that her mother did not like boats, which ties back to the agent having a bracelet helping her with seasickness. That was what clinched it for me. But the reasons for all of this I can't explain. So if this is the case, it could go a few different ways. One, Imogene's mother was an agent working to get information on the Colliers, or she is not actually an Interpol agent at all, and she is all part of this ruse to make her seem as if she's one in order to get information from people who usually would not share information. Some things that threw me off, Interpol agents can't make arrests. They don't carry weapons, but we clearly saw Agent Erickson carrying a weapon as an Interpol agent. This does not happen. They're, they have no law enforcement. They're just investigators. 
This could easily be TV taking liberties with the duties of Interpol. If this is indeed Imogene's mother pretending to be an Interpol agent, who and why would she be doing this? And why is this happening? Was her death faked and she's now or all along worked for Victor Sam's? Is she Victor Sam's? Why wouldn't at the very least Imogene recognize her? Maybe she does. Again, Imogene talked as if she never would have thought the Colliers had anything to do with her mother's death. To me, that makes no sense. She had to have thought about it. This leads me to believe that even if Imogene isn't in on what's going on, this whole boat excursion was a setup for something, set up with many people and the crew being in on it. Obviously, Sunil, Winnie, and likely others on the boat are all acting on the behalf of Victor Sands. When Agent Erickson captures Jules, he gives her a smirk. It could be a smirk that says the stowaways got free, but to me it seemed as if it was a confirmation, as if everything was going according to plan. Also when Sunil is talking to someone who seems to be in digital marketing, he states that they are selling a feeling, not reality. That these people's time on this boat is not real, but it should feel real. But it is 100% a controlled situation. I think a murder mystery was created for Rufus to solve. The kingmaker, the governor, were put on the boat in order to be killed or exploited. And to some extent, maybe the Colliers. There's no logical reason Madam Chun would know of the kingmaker, Miss Collier's affair. It had to be information given to her by someone who works on the boat. Someone with access to the secret security cameras hidden in many rooms. And just like Miss Collier, Anna cheating on her wife was yet another way of the Chuns to get blackmail on the Colliers in order to get what they want out of the situation. I was correct that the Collier's lawyer was engaging in some BDSM with Teddy. But when Agent Erickson put him in a cell because he wouldn't state who tied him up, it didn't make sense to me. Agent Erickson spoke in a way to say that she thought it may have been Jules or whoever tied him up. Lulin is now safe from that person, but looking at what he was wearing, it's clear this wasn't any nefarious type of situation. He wasn't kidnapped for information or anything. And as conservative as Agent Erickson may be, he had to have had the idea that the situation they found Lulin in was consensual and the fact that it never occurred to her makes me feel like this was all a play but the big thing is Lelia Rufus found her hiding and she speaks of Danny not Keith Trubitsky and mentioned that Winnie was not the person who killed Danny and just the follower of Victor Sam's it seems as if she knew more than Rufus and if taken at face value that would mean She's likely to tell Rufus that Danny revealed this information to her while he was still alive on the boat after she confronted him about following her and her wife around. But this doesn't make sense. Her arguing with Danny or Keith Trubitsky on the boat would have been performative for Rufus to find out later, only if Danny was in on it also. I don't believe Danny would die for this cause. So I'm going to say no, that she did not know him before they got on the boat, but they did in fact talk. That would be a whole lot of information that Danny told her, and it doesn't make sense why he would not share this information with Rufus. She's using the idea that Danny didn't have time while on the boat, but I don't see how Danny could have uncovered so much information so quickly that he would feel the need or want to inform Lelia, someone he ideally had never known before this point, of what's going on. Still doesn't even explain how she knew about the secret door in the boat. This isn't something Danny would have known. I think Lelia is part of the setup for Rufus, giving him a mystery to solve. Back in episode one, I believe Llewellyn stated that the Colliers have information that could bury him. If the Colliers have this information, I'm assuming that the Chuns have this information 
or the chunks might want this information. But what kind of information could that be? Maybe he is some type of fraud. I don't know, maybe that he is Victor Sam's. I don't think so, but it would make sense for him to stop investigating once he knew that his assistant was onto his alias. Maybe he set this all up in order for Imogene to figure out that it was him all along. All I know is Rufus Coatsworth is not as good as he seems to be. In episode four, Coatsworth talked with Imogene while she questioned the little Ukrainian girl. Imogene fed the girl information about Danny's murder that the girl then agreed with, muddying the waters of her own memory. But I myself have done many questioning sessions and interrogations in real life. And this is true. Witness details are already bad, but leading someone into information makes whatever is said far less likely to be true. That's why I found it funny that in the first episode, we saw Coatsworth lead 10-year-old Imogen to information when asked to recollect what happens. He told her that it was raining and that there was a chill in the air. And that information she already knew, when that may not have been the case at all. He implanted memories of what happened the day of her mother's death. But why? I don't know what's going on, but I have lots of thoughts, and I'm sure the episode tonight will change my thoughts even more. I know this one was a little wild and very late, but let me know your thoughts below. Am I barking up the wrong tree? Do you, do you think Agent Erickson is Kira Scott? Is Rufus a bad guy? Let me know your thoughts down below. My name is Dallas. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the shore.